everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka MBT, and we are back with another Twitter thread. Today we're going to be talking about jump scares, monsters that as soon as you see them, you realize my opponent is up to something heinous, and I want no part of it. But you don't get that choice. This isn't Sub Replay Friday. You can't just tab over to another streamer. My example is Phantasmal Lord Ultimal Bish Balkan. This card's hilarious because up until they summon this card, it just looks like your opponent is going through a normal synchro combo. Then you see him and you go, can we talk about this? Ah, Nash, not only correct, but also playing this deck. What a hip of crit. As someone who played this deck at least once a month out of every year since I've come back to Yu-Gi-Oh, I can assure you this is the guy behind a lot of stupid combos. You want to know something crazy, by the way? Not only does he hand loop uh, non once per turn, he also does not need a non-tuner. Uh, of course, no thread like this would be complete without the master of sub replay Friday himself, youtube.com slash Luke Von Karma. Anyway, watch out for my flying elephant attack. You ever notice that flying elephant's trunk is like transparent? Another great one from Nash, Cannon Soldier, Cannon Soldier Mark II, Amazon as Archers, Toon Cannon Soldier, None of these guys are used for anything fair. Super Heavy Samurai Soul Breaker Armor. Why does this deck have a burn spell? I first heard about this card when you used it to make Ebly and Rescue Ways. Hey, let's not go pointing any fingers here. I've seen 34 different FTKs with this card. Hop, 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 this card can be used for normal things. The most problematic thing about Yu-Gi-Oh! is the primary trans rep is it's only good in stupid, dumb Black Garden combos. Hey, that's not fair. It's also good in Bish Balkan. Listen, I support trans people. But Foxcade says, only ever seen this in Master Duel videos and <laughs> probably by GCD. That's because I imagine constantly asking your opponent to move this asshole around the board while you FTK them would result in getting punched in the face. You know, Dyer has a better point here. Uh oh. Whenever you just see this guy, you know they're doing something unfair. Oh fuck, they had IP, I lose. This girl failure, Cupid Pitch. Is Cupid Pitch a girl? I always assumed it was just like a breedable twink. If only we had some sort of list that chronologued every single female. But yeah, this is mostly just used to search that guy who turns into Colossus on his own. Rebecca says, in 2018, seeing this card was just knowing you were going to be sat there for 20 minutes while your opponent summons 20 garnets. Go get a coffee and a smoke whilst you wait. Oh, cool. Kyoto Waterfront. What a neat little advantage engine for Kaijus. Oh, you sweet summer child. I have six counters for Gamsiel and you've got three cards in hand. I never got to the 38 minute mark, but if I did, I imagine they do something unfair. You guys just keep giving me an opportunity to talk about this deck. Love, 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 love the fact that Gishi has been part of not one, not two, but three different completely unfair FDK adjacent style decks. We've of course got Zelgigas as for a short period of time, the most effective way to loop uh, Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Gustav Max. Uh, we've now got a significant amount of the new Evagishki cards, uh, the other six star for instance, uh, that rip cards out of the hand in a deck that plays enough deep sea cards to get your opponent down to zero on turn one. And of course, the 37 minute mind August FTK. No shade to actual Valence lovers, but I have never seen this card in the wild without it being tied to some jank FTK deck. It was so funny. For months, Valence players were asking me to check out the deck. They were like, it does so many cool things. You know what they showed me? A bunch of lists that searched and then normal summoned Cyberstein. And then they banned Cyberstein and they started showing me a bunch of lists that would summon Fossil Dynapacacephalo. Awesome. Cool! He may be banned, but I'm not about to forgive his sins anytime soon. This didn't mean you were getting FTK'd. It meant you were about to see the line, baby! Tokens for Marshall Metal, Marshall, Marshall Metal, Marshall, some of the tokens back. These ladies send more than one equip spell. I am leaving. A funny part about this card is that I mention it in my video on the Clips channel where I review the Gate Guardian cards. And I talk about how you can add Gate Guardian to hand and then pitch it to turn on the uh, new spell card. And someone was like, what do you mean I sold gets you Gate Guardian? you would have to send 11 equip spells to the graveyard. Luna says, okay, I know she was like incredibly broken and meta relevant. <laughs> you were ever using it to give the opponent something. You were up to some silly bullshit and I missed that when she got banned. Thankfully, we have Transversa now. Summon Sorceress for a short period of time was the best way to get a bullshit card onto your opponent's side of the field. Frequently, you would give them a monster just so you could keep extending like you bricked on too many things. But uh, you know what? I'll go one step further. Most of the decks that played this card were more than capable of playing without her. But if they ever accessed a line that used her, they were winning on the spot. There was nothing you could do about it. Ah, Bish Balkan's brother in arms, Chronomaly Machumek. All I wanted to do was OTK someone in 2008 off the effect of Gaga Ga Girl, but now he's a full-blown war criminal. I like that Machumek is like a prison. Like it looks like a floating prison. If you see either of these guys, especially in combination on Edison Ladder, run. Treasure Pander, as Distant Coder would say, uh, pretty much always used for the worst FDK you've ever seen in your life. Imagine putting Exodia into your deck and being like, no, I'm playing a deck that's worse than Exodia-ing turn one. 
God, I miss the law of the normal. One of the first cards that I kept trying to break. As a child, I was like, I'm going to make this work. Do you remember when they printed dual avatar and I was like, finally, one card that turns this on and it was still bad? At one of the remote dual YCSs, I played against a shark duelist who was just making this turn one and I was playing Eldritch and I just stared in my extra deck and I saw the white woman and I went, thank God. Thank God I got this card. This is somehow a weirdly bullshit adjacent card. It can search itself for deep draw, search for tune monsters. It feels the next step like dark for allure, deep draw, or just search tune cannon soldier. There's never anything this card has done that has been anything but bullshit. Fortunately, it's banned, but nothing good comes from this. Have you been on Master Duel lately? I still think about the 50-minute combo you made me sit through that you messed up and had to restart 15 minutes in. This was the deck that ended Turbo Tuesday. After I summoned this, I was like, no, there's... There's, there's nothing else I can do with this. Ooh, fantastic answer. God, every time I see this guy in like a coping high roll sprite list, I'm like, who hurt you? Wow, this is an old one, but 100% correct. Flintlock. Uh -huh. Yeah, there it is. I remember in 2013, this was the YouTube combo. It's never been used for anything good, it, just YouTube FTKs, but apparently the Master Duel Coco Melon channels discovered it also. That's a perfect way to describe those. A combo line I have a deep fascination with is the Gigaplant Loop. If you are ever on Edo Pro and see someone play these three cards in the specific order that they appear here, get a snack to eat. I don't know how nobody's mentioned this yet, but there is no scenario where you see an Emerald with one of these attached and it isn't red alert. Kithaga in general is just like, oh god damn it. CJ says on paper you'd think he's a good card, but at this point the only decks that use it are archetypes who haven't gotten support since 2015 and the biggest war crime FTK you've ever seen. Shouts out to uh, Summoner Monk, summon a copy of Rescue Ferret. Hey, speaking of! <laughs> <laughs> the king himself, allowing people to summon any amount of fusion monsters for free while he is a psychic. Oh, yeah, the uh, psychic equip spell in Reprodocus could be on here as well. I miss when this archetype wasn't FTK or bust. This card is support from 2050's era Yu-Gi-Oh that destroys any potential for counterplay. I thank God every day that you can't do shortcuts in Yu-Gi-Oh, because if you could, boy, would we be seeing a lot of this. For the low price of a tier one sub to Luke Von Karma, this is three copies of Pot of Greed. Correct. I see Walk with a big boy on the field, and I know I'm in danger. Yep, Clock, uh, of course, is always is about to burn you for an insane amount of damage. He's yet to be used in a manner that isn't overload fusing for absolutely everything. Raid Raptor Arsenal Falcon, a good answer, but this card too, Phantom Knight's rank up magic launch. Oh my God. Whether it was turning a redoer into an Azathoth or going into a Kali Yuga, this card has never been used for anything fun. These are some deep cuts. Power Tool Dragon, of course, features in a number of FTKs, but Doloren before he was eroded. Who remembers Symbol of Heritage being on the list? And of course, Black Garden. Yu-Gi-Oh is a really fun game. Sometimes you can sit down across from your opponent and decide that the pair of you are going to play a really interesting, interactive best of three. And sometimes they flashbang you with this bullshit. Hopefully I never see it at my local again, but I'm a realistic man. Ah, uh, say the line, GCD. He's coming!